bhakti yoga but it literally means yoga of buddhi yoga of intelligence so taking the meaning of buddhi as intelligence krishna's order would mean arjuna using your intelligence you should keep away from engaging in this ghastly warfare you should avoid all abominable activities so and krishna even emphasized the word buddhi 32 times in the last uh, part of the uh, in the, in the last part of chapter 2 of bhagavad gita so arjuna concluded that by renouncing renouncing fighting he can thus keep away from this abominable activity of killing his kinsmen but then arjuna thinks but still why is krishna urging me to fight he says that you should use buddhi and then he says that you should do your duty so arjuna was naturally confused so chapter 3 starts with arjuna's query to krishna he is asking for clarification because he was confused whether i should fight or whether i shouldn't fight that was arjuna's query at the beginning of chapter 3 so for our understanding we have divided this chapter into four sections and there was an acronym for that do you remember tree tree so the first section t t stands for tyaga so it starts with arjuna's question is buddhi better than if if buddhi is better than karma then krishna why are you asking me to fight so then krishna replies he says that there are two kinds of people there are the jnana yogis but people who renounce this world and there are people who do their prescribed duties they are the karma yogis so for you karma yoga is better than jnana yoga why because premature renunciation of work is not recommended to arjuna because inaction is unnatural so for you karma yoga is better than jnana yoga but there are some people who wear the garb of a sanyasi who pretend that they are sanyasis and they do, they don't do any kind of work but internally they their minds are on various sense objects so internally they are mentally enjoying but externally they are wearing the robes of a renunciant so he said such mithyacharas don't be such a kind of pretender arjuna for you karma yoga is better than jnana yoga and by doing that you can prevent bondage in this material world you can satisfy the lord and avoid bondage so the first section is about tyaga then comes r what does r stand for verses 10 to 16 refers to the various steps on the yoga ladder so what is the first step on the yoga ladder the first step on the yoga ladder karma yoga karma yoga below karma yoga comes the karma kanda section of the vedas and below that comes materialistic life or a life of animalistic propensities so krishna says okay the first step on the yoga ladder is karma yoga if you can't do karma yoga then at least you follow the karma kanda section of the vedas and what is the advantage of following that you can do sacrifice for the demigods satisfy the demigods they will bless you in return and you can materially progress and at the same time you will get purified also so at least do practice karma kanda because one who doesn't perform yajnas they lead a life full of sin so that's about the second section and now currently we are in the third section e stands for exemplary what does exemplary mean example setting an example or something which is very good standing something which stands apart that is the meaning of exemplary so what is exemplary here what is exemplary 
Karma Yoga. Krishna has glorified Karma Yoga. He says that you should perform Karma Yoga and even if you are self-realized, you should still, as an obligation, you should do it. You should do this, your prescribed duties without attachment. So currently we are in this section and the, the last section also stands for E, which is enemy of the soul. And the enemy of the soul is Kama, lust, which we shall learn later. So these are the four 